let's do this. Try, try, let's do this. All right, let's do this. Here we go. Hello, everyone. This is Mike. I'm Susie. And this is Playlisting with Mike and Susie. Uh, uh, we sorry. decided to make a podcast because I love making playlists. I think you do, too. Yeah, I like to make playlists. And uh, I always come up with different ideas for different types of scenarios to make a playlist. Like, um, like a kind of like how some movies where people go, oh, this is like a car chase song or... If you're watching something, or oh, this is a fight song, or right, oh, this, this is would a... be like a bank heist song. Yeah. So I came up with, or we came up with the idea, I should say, of let's start making a podcast where we make different types of playlists for different scenarios. So in case we, just... we ever need to heist a bank, exactly. So this one was kind of a weird one. It was like um, inspired by. That beginning scene in Devil Wears Prada where um, all the models are getting ready to go and we see Andy, our main protagonist, and she's also getting ready. She's in a hurry and they're playing that great, like, perfect movie montage song, uh, Suddenly I See by KT Tunstall. There's just so many songs that are like that from that time, like the late 90s, early 2000s, where there's just, there's a movie where there's somebody hustling and bustling to go to work to their office job, and there's like these, I don't know if you say fast-paced, not fast-paced. I would say almost an overused trope is getting ready to go to work in an... 90s early 2000s they have movie. A, like a tumbler mostly yeah like a tumbler like a big coffee and they got toast in their mouth like they feel like it was always a woman and it kind of played into like a subconsciously like woman's empowerment movement where like women can be um just as work oriented as men are and maybe like a coffee in one hand a high heel in the other just like jumping almost over the threshold on their way out of their apartment yeah, like they almost die like 30 struggling. times. Struggling. <laughs> yes, exactly. They get hit by a car. No. They, they'll... they'll uh, the, you the, can't kill her in the first five minutes. No, but you know, they that happens. Like a car will pull up and the pull puddle will go on her. Right, yes, yes. Um. So this is that playlist of songs that would be in that scene of that movie. And I'm a lady with unruly hair and I'm late for work. And you could also be a guy too. Guys also could be late for work. I don't know. I feel like I'm going with women on this one. So, <laughs> all right, so let's start it off. So what, what would you say the first song would be? Do, should we, do we put in Suddenly I See in this playlist? Well, yeah, because that's, okay. that's the so that's in starting there. point, yeah. So, all right, so what else, what other songs would be in there? Um, I feel like a really good fit is a song called Breathless by The Coors. Yeah, that would be good. Um, let's see, is that, it's got that starting, like, breathy vocal. Yeah. And then it, it goes... Yeah, so it goes right straight to a fast-paced kind of thing. Yeah, it's very fast-paced. It's very movie montage -y. Yeah, I could see opinion. it. I could see it. So I have something that's kind of... It's a little bit more low-key, but kind of also fast-paced at the same time. Um, David Gray's Babylon. It's kind of like early morning, guy going to work. Maybe he's not hustling and bustling, but maybe he's walking to work. Maybe, maybe this it's is still dark out almost. The this sun's would be just coming up. yeah. Maybe the this is like the guy's point of view of that day, and then the woman is doing the <laughs> the breathless. Yeah, or or the KT Tunstall. Right. All right. So, um, do you have any other songs? I have a bunch here. Um, All right, so you, you do I yours on the one. Um, I wrote down Every Day is a Winding Road by Sheryl Crow. Yes, yeah, perfect. Every day is a winding road. I get a little bit closer. Every day is a faded sign. I get a little bit closer to feeling fine. So just kind of 
gets right to that point of like she's always in a hurry. I feel like during this montage, maybe like her significant other is holding out her handbag for her. Like she almost forgets her purse yeah. on her way out of the apartment. And like maybe he's just standing there holding it for her, kind of like a duh moment. Like you don't need this. Like that kind of like a corny thing. Like now, that. would this be for the part? Like would this be a city? It's well, a I'm, city. In I'm my thinking mind, more. It's a city. I'm thinking more of her in a car. No, uh, in mine, I feel like she kind of stumbles and almost like loses her metro card, and like she's like looking for her metro card. She's like getting on the subway. My thing is, I think of the video, and it's more like um, autumn kind of feel, and maybe she's driving in a car, and there's foliage, but she's still, it's still. Where is she commuting from? No, no, it's not a city landscape. She's driving, like, she lives in a regular town, and she's going to work. Where does she work? Like, like what kind of job she has, or where... where I'm asking geography? you, like, what type of commute is this? Is this, like, a 40-minute commute? No. From, this like, a like, suburbia into, like, a metropolitan area? Is that to, what you're trying to... To, to make sense, of, like, to, to think of a a scene... I don't know. I can't think of I feel of like the... you're doing a different montage now. I, I like... think that song is good. I feel like the foliage out the window is the montage of her maybe going to see her mother's grave in the cemetery. Maybe. Like, upstate mm. New York, and she's got to drive through trees to get to this grave site. Uh, every day. Here's the thing. The video for that was very, like, uh, brownie, um, beigey Yeah. Tones. All of Cheryl Crow's stuff was the brown and the beige. Not okay. really. Not really. No, she had some dark stuff. She had, like, the rust colors. All right, so I guess it's my turn. Uh, what did I put? David Gray in the last one? Let's do, um... I have two Natasha Benningfield songs. <laughs> who is the, um... I'm, I'm surprised we didn't even talk about her yet. This, this... Playlist wouldn't be complete without a Natasha Bedingfield song. I feel like both songs could definitely. Well, we could put playlist. both songs. So, yeah. uh, the first one is Unwritten. And then, Perfect. yeah, and then the next one is Pocket Full of Sunshine. That one, yeah, that one I feel like almost literally it would have to be of extremely sunny montage what like, about these words is the that, sun's just coming up is the song called these words or is it called um, words something like that so i could look it up but maybe that instead no i feel like that's in the movie it's in the same movie but again it's a different scene where like maybe she just met this guy and she doesn't want to be interested in him because she's so busy with work yeah and like like, she's kind of interested in this guy, but, like, it's hard for her because she hasn't been in love. She hasn't given love a chance in a while. I'm looking at Natasha Bedingfield right now. She looks crazy. Yeah, she's a crazy lady. She a, let's see how old ta Natasha Bedingfield is. Sorry, we're going to take a little what detour. A, what a tangent. Let's see how old it is. She looks like she was, like, when she was popular, she was 35. Let's see. I wouldn't be surprised. No, she's only 39. Now? Yeah. She was born 1981 on my mother's birthday. Oh, wow. So, uh, so what are we, so Natasha Benningfield, those three songs by Natasha Benningfield. I feel no? like these words are not, that song is not on. But it's got those strings. Montage. It's got those strings that would be in that kind of oh, yeah. scene. Yeah. Because it's like, burp, burp, like it, it cuts at you. Yeah. I, I guess I have to agree because you're really passionate about it.
I'm when those strings, when those violin uh, strings come on, it's kind of harsh. And that, like, because there's three of them, bum, 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 like that. So, like, she could get almost hit three times I'm gonna be honest, by a car. Your certainty about this subject is frightening to me, so I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm going to let you write so, on that one. All right, so let's put three of those on. Let's put all three Natasha Bedingfield singles. Go for it. Are we going to scatter them, or are they back to back to back? Well, that's the thing with playlists. You could <laughs> you could just put random. Yeah. You could just put anything you want there and put random. Mm-hmm. It's not like a mixtape. This is a playlist. You, you're definitely right. I have um, a song by Kelly Clarkson, who again might be one of the queens of this type of pop. Um, song is, I mean, it's hard to pick one Kelly Clarkson song, but it's stronger in parentheses. What doesn't kill you? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Stand a Yes. And I feel like that one's really like, uh, maybe she's angry. Uh huh. Like the protagonist maybe just had her heart broken and she's like really diving headfirst into burying herself in her work, um, kind of uh, spitefully. Yeah. I, I don't know. What, what was the song again? What was it called? Stronger. Oh, Stronger. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not really a starting of the movie song. Does it have to be the start of the movie? Or are you just talking about... It have to be the start of the movie. It's the start of her day. I don't know. Maybe. I guess we could put it on it. Oh, it's on there. Okay, I'm sorry. I already put it on there. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'll do mine. Next is... Um, I have a bunch of songs. What do I want to put? All right, let's do this. Let's Let's put in... Now, all these movies had... Um, like a late '90s, early 2000s breakbeat electronica song. Yes. Um, they would have Moby or Fat Boy Slim. Yeah, for um, sure. It wasn't. It wouldn't be complete without it. So I'm gonna pick the one I think that was in every movie at the time, mm-hmm. which was uh, Wise Guys. Ooh la la. gold yeah i feel like that you could have any type of you could have a cooking now there's two you could have running in the rain montage (laughs) there's two songs that i was gonna pick which is either that song or propeller heads history repeating but i think that one's a little too edgy Uh, i think really ooh la la you probably hit the Nail and then head. also they all they have another song called Start the Commotion that was also in every other movie. Like why the Ooh La La was in every movie and Start the Commotion was in the movies that that song wasn't in at the time. This, I think it's gotta be ninety eight, ninety nine when that came out. Yeah, like maybe two thousand. It's all a blur. It's all the same. Alright, so what do you have? Um honestly I have a couple that I think are a little too quiet for this scene in the movie, but they're definitely... I have a lot of quiet ones. Rom-com, but I feel like that's another playlist, totally. Yeah. Um, Do you want to maybe segue into another playlist, or do you want to do a separate episode? We could do a separate thing for a different playlist. Uh, One that I do want to include, which is definitely on the quieter side, but really fits with the whole theme, is um, the original version of There She Goes, not the... Sixpence on the richer version, but the one by the laws. The laws. That would go on. That would be at the start. That was in a lot of start of the movies. Right. That was um, 
Just the protagonist in my mind is a little angrier than that. Like she's be- a little more in a rush than that. I believe that was in the start of So I Married an Axe Murderer. I believe that was at the start of the mo- of the movie. I but I think it was a re-recorded version of it. Um, I don't know who did I think maybe the Spencer laws did it. No, no. Spencer, they did that for a different movie, right? Or was it just for their album? I don't know. It was on their album. It was on the same album as Kiss Me. Yeah. But that was used in very famously and She's All That. Now, all right, it's it's still good because that, that could be start of the movie ladies going to work, not necessarily hustling and bustling. Honestly, I feel like it's more of the end of the movie where she's happy now. No. She's kind of contented. That's with a start what she's song. Doing. No, I put it in the start of the movie. It's quiet. Sets though. the scene. It's not very quiet. It's jangly, not quiet. Mm. All right, so um, I have I think I have a good one, which is Savage Gardens. I want you. Has like that very electronic kind of flavor to it. Yeah, and it's 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 upbeat. It gets to the point. It's it's that sound. It's this is a lot of people wearing like uh, remember that like metallic leather. Yes. Yeah. Cranberry frosted pleather. A lot of like silvery matte clothes. Yeah. Or um, maybe like the really th- like um stiff denim, stiff denim. Oh, stiff denim! Remember oh stiff God, denim? Yeah. And sometimes the denim had even like a metallic sheen. To Mod it. Squad. Ooh. Remember Mod Squad? I wish I could forget. Or um, like the guys wearing the th- uh guys wearing a, a three button suit, which is not cool anymore. You can't wear three button suits anymore. I don't know. This about is that. three button suit. Um, I just remember ladies with way too many ponytails. Like, you don't need that many ponytails. Or, like, the guy's hair was flat, but in the front, the bangs went up. Yeah, but I feel like people still do that. No. Like that flip front. Not flip front. No, not not the flip front. The spiky bangs. Oh, no. Too scary. Spiky bangs. Too scary. Frost tips. Mark McGrath. Mm, I'm thinking more of the guy from Savage Garden. Oh, you're just thinking about Savage Garden? Yeah, I'm thinking about that. Because of the song? Yeah, but people were going to work like that. People were going to work looking like Savage Garden. I mean, probably. Do you have another one? Was there anyone who didn't look like that at the time? Um, I'm just looking at my list here. A lot of them, I feel like, belong on a different playlist. Um, Maybe Eve 6, Inside Out. Okay. Just because it has that 90s kind of movie montage mm-hmm. sound to it. But again, I, I don't know if it's in this scene that we're talking about. Well, how about this? It's soft, but it, it also it's not a bad introduction song uh, to a movie. It's not a bad intro. Uh, uh, maybe it is. Uh, Des Rays, You Gotta Be. You Gotta Be is, yeah, it's definitely in the movie. Let's just talk about the rest of the songs we wrote down that are also definitely for sure in this same movie. All right, let's do that. Um, Go ahead. Basically, this is a movie where this woman is hurt to the point of being angry. And just, I feel like she was maybe dumped by this, like, alpha male super buried in work kind of guy and she feels like oh let me bury myself in my work also because women can also do that so now she has like a briefcase and she's kind of just even subconsciously just doing her most professional version of herself but what does she do she goes into a coffee shop where the guy behind the counter Who's oh, like, almost immediately falls in love. No, right she over doesn't again. fall in love. But, like, has that chance to. No, no, no. It's a chance encounter. She does not fall in love. Yet. 
No. Because the guy screws up her order or spills something on well, her. No, yeah, she does. Let's picture. Let's 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 say it's Mark Ruffalo. It's not. Well, he's he's definitely quirky enough, but he's a little too old for. Well, not now, Mark Ruffalo. This point. is nineties. Oh, it's the nineties. Yeah, for sure. It would be Mark late nineties. Mark Ruffalo. He's got that soft-spoken uh, New York style for sure to him, and. But he's, he's wearing, wearing stiff denim. He's wearing like a no, no. He's not wearing stiff denim. The stiff guy denim just, jeans. The, no, the guy that just dumped her is wearing the stiff denim jeans. No, the guy that just dumped her. He's the guy with the um. Or is he the Armani Exchange guy? Yeah, he's got like, <laughs> like that blue BMW. You know, remember that blue color BMWs? Sure. Yeah. Like the I don't know, like BMW blue. I guess that's what it's called. I don't know. It's more like a lapis. Yeah, it's 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 like a royal blue, okay. royal blue, and so royal blue BMW guy dumps her. Yeah, and he's wearing like those web sunglasses. There was a remember the company Web. Sure, no, I don't, <laughs> but you do. So <laughs> they saw it at Neiman Marcus, and um, I wasn't shopping at Neiman Marcus when I was nine years old. I wasn't either. I was just called my my brothers were, so. <laughs> He's wearing the cool sunglasses. He dumps her. Or right. she dumps so him. She, I no, forgot what you said. He dumps her because just because he's uh, such a businessman. Like yeah. maybe he needs to go to like China or Dubai or whatever. Yeah. And she um is hurt by this because like she wants to go with him. She's all ready to pack up and just do whatever he needs her to do. And he just goes, Oh no, you know. Actually, this is going to take all of me, and we mm-hmm. need a break and everything like that. And, you know, later on in the movie, you find out that he probably had another, like, girlfriend on the side or something. Yeah, there's all, there, yeah, this guy, he, he's just, he he's has a terrible person. He, exactly. He, he's terrible. So she goes and she meets this quirky guy almost immediately, like maybe six, seven she's minutes into thinking, the movie. She's, but not, she's thinking, not thinking of love at all. No, but he likes her. But he, he's kind of a jerk to her, too. Like, he's, he's playing it off. He's not a jerk, but he, he's a silly person like he doesn't really know how to be suave mm-hmm. and he knows that so he doesn't really try because she's kind of out of his league maybe he's and like he knows it well maybe maybe he doesn't like her because she's like a snobby person he thinks she is and then he finds out later that yeah. she was just acting that way because she was scorned he's maybe like oh what are you doing you know don't do your mark ruffalo you with your uh What's I'm not your, gonna tolerate yeah. your Mark Ruffalo impression right what now. What are those like uh, Manola Blonic shoes? You come in here with those Manola Blonic shoes, and he's yeah, he's like mocking her. Yeah, and she's like blushing because she's just trying to be that. No, person. she's not blushing. She's not blushing. No, she's blushing like she on, doesn't on the like him. She doesn't like him, and they, he doesn't like her. But really, at the end, they get together and they like each other. You 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 don't know how to write a romantic I, comedy. Oh, and you do. I'm doing good. I feel like she's kind of interested in him, but she doesn't want to be. Like, she's done with men right no, now. No, she does not like him at all. Because he's a jerk. And Why he is he a jerk? I thought he was a quirky, nerdy He is, guy. but he doesn't like her because he thinks that she is like a stuck up... Like judging him. Uh, like so his own he, she looks down on people. He thinks that she looks down on him, but really she has no interest, right? To go out with anyone. She right. wants to be a professional woman. Right. Yes. He just works at the coffee shop, but here's the thing. He doesn't just work at the coffee shop. He owns the coffee shop. Nobody knows. So he's a successful person as well. Right, he actually owns the coffee shop. But he plays by his own rules. You this find is not out later that like he invented this coffee sh- not invented he, not even, no, he no, opened no. it because it was like his father's dying wish not even no 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 he opened this coffee <laughs> like shop like a super sweet sack no nah, no nah, no nah, nah. he opened the coffee shop because he doesn't want people like he, he like he doesn't understand Starbucks. Why would they charge six dollars? Oh, he's against capitalism. Yeah. Why would you charge six dollars for a cup of coffee? It's a cup of coffee. It's a cup of bean water. He's that yeah. guy. Okay. Maybe that's the name of the store, Bean Water. I like it. Yeah, so I'll, he owns Bean Water. I would go into Bean Water. I'd go into Bean Water. I'd order a coffee. What else is on the menu of Bean Water? Um, nothing. It's just coffee, tea, uh, water, 
But what can you eat in there? Muffins. Muffins and scones. Scones. So Yeah, so they do scones also because sometimes all the muffin tins are being used and they just use the same batter on a sheet um, with parchment paper. No, no, I don't even think, I don't think he makes it there. I think he buys muffins. It's like a regular coffee shop, bean water. No, I feel like he makes muffins. Mm-mm. Like, that's it's a, part of, it's that's a part cool of his cafe. charm. He can also cook. It's a cool cafe. He makes good coffee. That's what he's doing. He's, no. He's, I feel like he can also bake. No. He could, he makes great coffee. That's his thing. He loves the art of making coffee. He doesn't understand why people would go to Starbucks. That's not, he's like, that's not coffee. That's a milkshake. That's what he's like. Yeah, you want a milkshake, go to Starbucks. You want coffee? <laughs> Come to Bean Water. He's that kind of guy. Okay. So, after she meets Bean Water Guy, yeah. she kind of starts to soften up a little bit. Um, but what she happens, doesn't want to admit to it. Here's what happens. He drops something on her purse, or let's say her jacket. And listen, give me the jacket. I'm going to have it laundered. Right. And then I'll bring it to where you work. You work near here, right? Or uh, work near here. Here. And then she's like, yeah, I work at this. All right, here, give me the, I'm going to have it dry cleaned. I know a guy who will do it. Tomorrow, I'll bring it to you to work. So, so he, he said, listen, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry to do that. So, All right, no, it's okay. And then they said, listen, let me make it up to you. Come back later. I'm, I'll get you a cup of coffee on the house. Come. I feel like he brings, when he brings her her jacket, he also brings, like, muffins for her office. Because I'm not listening to you. And he also bakes. And he brings his muffins to the office, and she's like offended by the muffins. He doesn't bake. At, no, why would you bake? Why would the Why would the guy that loves coffee bake? Because his mother left him a recipe book, no. and then she died. It never happened. No, this guy loves coffee. It's a coffee place only. Why can't the he have a dead baker mother? The The muffins that he buys are just. From BJ's? No, not yeah, but he hates them. He doesn't like them either. He just has to have them because people told him he has to have them. Okay. Why like are his you business partners him, like cynical? Because his business partners are telling him we gotta have some type of food. It's not about food. It's about the coffee. It's about the coffee. This right. is bean water. It's not bean water with muffins. Right. It's not called it's not... bean water and muffins. It's called bean water. Right. Yeah. So he doesn't know. There's no co there's no muffins involved with bean water, and um, I'll be honest with you, I really want a good cup of coffee right now. <laughs> I'm gonna make one after this. You made this. yourself want coffee. So what other songs you have? So the rest of the songs. Did you do one or on? I did one? I don't remember. Well, I'll do one right now. I'll just go down by, by how I wrote it. Um, Natalie and Brulia's wrong impression. <laughs> So what, uh, what else do you have? Um, I had Dreams by the Cranberries. That's a good one. That could be in the start of the, of the movie. That's one of my favorite songs. I feel like that really kind of encapsulated the 90s. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't know if this is a movie made in the 90s, a movie set in the 90s, made right now. Um, it's late 90s, early 2000s. We can't really use because Mark Ruffalo right now because he's I don't think anybody. Gray. I don't think anybody is working in that kind of environment now. I Meaning not just because of the pandemic, but because I don't think there's any jobs like that where there's just a bunch of people working in an office. Um... Even if there are, I feel like it's not the way it was in the 90s where, like, it was such a big... Like, there's no journalist job like that. There's no newspaper job like that. Right. There are no more magazines, no, really. No, no. Um, maybe they're, if anything, maybe, like, a publicity company. Maybe they do publicity. 
Uh, Even still, that's just a bunch of kids on YouTube right now. Well, should they? Should this company be like a publicity company that deals with a lot of um, celebrities? And in the movie, there's like celebrity cameos. Oh yeah, you gotta have celebrity cameos. But we just gotta figure out where it's set so we can figure out. Well, it's set. Well, it'll be in New York. So let's say it's New York. No, what time? Oh, so let's say it's let's say two thousand two. Oh, so you got like maybe Johnny Knoxville coming through. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do this kind of movie. I feel like he would. He was really narcissistic at the time. Mm, I'm thinking. He loved being. You need famous. someone. You need someone definitely, that would need publicity. Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, maybe Brian Seacrest, or um, you got to think somebody fashionable, um, like, and someone that would do it. That's the other thing too. Like, who would be in this movie? Maybe. Uh, Maybe Dolor Mulrooney. Dermot. Why? I don't know. No. He's not a Who cool celebrity. Who wants to see him? It's, Everybody wants to see. That's the scene. most boring guy. You you're talking about Dylan McDermott. You get no, that mixed up. No, I know Dolor. Dur, how do you say the other Mulrooney? Dermot. I know Mulrooney. Dermot. Is it Dermot Mulrooney? Yes. Okay, so Dermot Mulrooney is the guy from. Uh, the, my best friend's, my best wedding. friend's wedding. And and he's the most boring man ever. Dylan McDermott is the guy that's not him. Yeah, he's yeah, on I American know. Horror Story. Yeah, now. I know him. I'm, I'm not, I know the difference. One. I know the difference. I'm trying to think of somebody that would do that kind of move. Maybe he's the boss. Maybe he's the boss of the company. Uh, he might be the boss. I don't know. Yeah, he's the boss. He's the guy running. Or is it, do you think a lady should be running the company? Mm. There's probably a lady running the company. Um, I mean, of course, I'm thinking of Meryl Streep, but just because she was in Devil Wears Prada again. What's the lady's name from? Maybe it's Sybil. Um, that... Oh, um. What's that lady's name? Christine Baranski. Christine Baranski. No, she's too on the quirky. nose. I think it's too on the nose of her being a boss of a company. She's not going to be the boss. Publicity. She'll be she'll be like the crazy secretary lady. She kind of like floats in and floats out. She's like a crazy. How about? Person. I feel like Jennifer Coolidge might be Jennifer the boss. Coolidge. Yeah, she because she's she's like uh, she'll play the like the dimwit. She's ditzy, but like she's commanding too. What about this lady? Hold on, I'm going on my computer, and I'm looking up the movie Crooklyn. And it's that lady. Um, she was also in Karina Karina, that one? No. Was she? No. Uh Alfre Woodard. I think Alfre Woodard would be perfect for that role. Yeah, she could be the boss. Yeah, she's the boss. She's the boss. Of the publicity company that this lady works at. Yep. Where it has celebrity Gen cameras. Jennifer Coolidge as like the assistant manager like she's in the second seat of power but she always is trying to maybe get the she power. maybe jennifer coolidge plays the fake celebrity that this lady's had like this is this is her lady's client and she's playing like the celebrity no i really want jennifer coolidge trying to command authority in the office oh you want her to do that yeah like okay. she's trying to command authority but she's terrible at it because she's also a dummy okay um I'm trying to think of celebrities that would be in this movie from that era. Um, how about um, like Stephen Dorff? Stephen Dorff is a good one. I feel like maybe Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg would be just the walking movie. through. She's kinda, friends with kinda, Alfred uh, Alfre Woodard. She's friends with Alfre Woodard, but she only likes her, and she yeah. kind of mocks all the rest of the people. Yeah. She like rolls her eyes at them. And is like, and okay. Alfre Woodard's like, get Whoopi on the line. Yeah, and then she comes in and she's like, I don't know what Alfre Woodard's name is, and then like maybe, um, mm, Mrs. Uh, you do you want a full name, or uh, I don't know, whatever she calls her, and she goes like, I'll see you later, girl, and she like winks. Maybe at her, her last leaves, name is leaves. like Devante, Miss Devante, yeah, Miss Devante, Miss Devante, yeah, uh, Lainey, Lainey Devante, yeah, but Woody, Whoopi Goldberg, Woody. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg only likes her in the office, and she knows like everyone else is kind of a dimwit, but she kind of likes our protagonist. By the way, who's playing playing our protagonist? Uh, it's not. Question. Um, we already got Mark Ruffalo. 
It's how it's, about what's her name? Lainey Boggs. What's her real name? Who? Rachel Lee Cook. Rachel Lee Cook. She could do this. Let's it's like innocent enough. Yeah. Or how about Sarah Michelle Geller? Um, Sarah Michelle Geller is the more experienced. Like Rachel Lee Cook kind of looks up to her, but she's kind of like too bitchy. No, Sarah Michelle Geller at that time would not take that role. She wouldn't be bitchy. She wouldn't take the second role. Yes, she would. No. She, she had a, a speechless cameo in She's All That. She was yeah, just was in the cafeteria. Yeah, but she, at 2002, she has a little more... She's Buffy already. She's Buffy. She's in the... I think she's in the Scooby-Doo movies but at the time. But she was the second, and I know what you did last summer. Yeah, but also she had a leading role in that um, Simply Irresistible movie. That wasn't... That was after the... That was, like, maybe 2004. All right, well, let's say it's that era. It's like she, I don't think she she would not pay second fiddle. Sarah Michelle Gellar played second fiddle a bunch of times. No, if anything, ooh, you know, what would be a good boss, Parker Posey. No, not Parker Posey. Yes. No. Maybe Parker Posey now. No, Parker Posey is one of the celebrities. She's one of the clients, and she kind of just like flails into. Like a middle of a scene and then flails out like she's just like a crazy person. She playing her, playing herself. All right, that's how you get so. Cozy. So who say Rachel Lee Cook? Um, so it's Rachel Lee Cook and maybe it's Selma Blair as the kind of bitchy Selma coworker Blair. that Rachel Lee Cook looks up to her, and she's like. Selma Blair is the lady that also likes Mark Ruffalo in the Office. Like, who's that guy? Like, she. It's like, who's that? Like. Oh, he like she's like oh he he owns the coffee shop down the street. He ruined my he owed sweater. Me, he owed me a dry and cleaner. Said, yeah, yeah. And he's like, wow, he is he is something. And then she starts saying, no, he's not. And then next, you know, they start like I don't think other. Selma Blair. Is Selma like, Blair. She's not cutesy like that. She's more mysterious she and brooding. No, you. She's in movies like that. <laughs> she's more like. I feel like she's more stuck up. Well, I think she would take this role so that way she plays a different part. You understand? Oh, so you want you want to see like a different side of her. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm making too much noise. I'm moving around. Um, um so also on this soundtrack is gonna be a song called Good by Better Than Ezra. Good. Here's the thing. That's like ninety three, ninety four. Yeah, but it's in the ninety in the nineties, they did like throwbacks like that. Now, there I was, wasn't a lot of. It wasn't overly saturated with popular music like the way it is now. Now, I I was talking to you earlier about this kind of place, and usually on the soundtracks of these songs is like a fun song, like a old throwback song. Yes. That people used to, like, let's say it's the karaoke song. So it's like a making fun of it song. And I thought of a good one after you mentioned this earlier. Okay. It's, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's the Walk 500 Miles song. Okay. What is it called? It's called 500 Miles. Is it called? It's by Proclaimers. The Proclaimers, yeah. Yes. But I would walk 500. So here's the thing, though. On the soundtrack, mm -hmm. it's not the original version. It's the people sing. It's the vid it's the movie clip of them singing the song. Um, maybe the soundtrack because this was kind of the time when DVDs were blowing up. Maybe the soundtrack also comes with a DVD of a music video of the cast of this movie. Exactly. Like, you can pop your CD soundtrack into your computer or your DVD player, and there's a music video of these people, and they're all doing the 500 Miles song. Okay. Yeah, it could be that. Yeah, but that's definitely... It's them singing... It's like singing. a bonus thing. Yeah. This is like her, like, Selma Blair saying, listen, you gotta come with me. There's this place. Uh, it just opened up. It's a cool karaoke place. And she's like, I can't, I gotta go home, and, and they're I famous gotta work. For, they're famous for something stupid, like, their happy hour is, like, their famous thing is, like, fried pickles. It's ladies' night tonight. Or something. It's ladies' night, ladies get in free. What else is on the menu? 
on the menu of the place. Yeah, there's like fried pickles, something like. Mm. There's stupid stuff. I think it's like a. I'm thinking like a tiki bar, kind of like a tiki bar karaoke place. Mm-hmm. And like as soon as you get in, they have like uh like they have lays. They put lays on you. They put uh they give you uh, coconut drinks. And <laughs> pina colada. Well, no, and drink like with oh, a coconut. Oh, and, and a coconut. Yeah, like you drink out of a coconut cup. Right. And um. And they do the karaoke in a satirical style, much in the way they did um, Benny and the Jets in 27 Dresses and ruined that song for me. I like the 500 miles thing. I think there's another, I think there could be something else though. Like, um, like, um, maybe they do like Mickey. No, they did that in Bring It On. Did they? I never saw it Bring It On. Are you oh, sure? oh I, I guess it's got the cheerleading in it, so I don't... I don't yeah, know. so wait, at the end of Bring It On, during uh-huh. the credits, it's like Gabrielle Union... I didn't know this. ...lip-syncing Mickey. It's a good song. I didn't, it's, I like didn't, a, it's, a, it's a great scene. I, don't, I never saw it. You never saw Bring It On? We're going to watch Bring It On later. I've seen it. I just never, like... I never saw the full Yeah, thing. we're going to watch Bring It On later. I know what happens. <sighs> Let me think oh, what Kirsten else. Oh, Kirsten Dunst is in this movie. Doing what? She's just in it. I don't know what she's doing yet. Get too she's many in, stars. She, she was in everything. Not really. Maybe she's playing herself, and maybe, like at the time, she was known as like such a goody, like a good girl. And, no, like, she wasn't. In, she was known as like she always took the parts of like the innocent, um, fun to be around, everybody's best friend. What Kristen Dunst movie are you watching? Like she was always everybody's best friend, she or like wasn't. the most popular girl or whatever. I don't know. But I feel I feel like in the movie she plays herself but she's like depressed. I'm trying to think of another song that they could, could do. Oh, right, let's all right, 500 Miles by Proclaimers. We'll put that in there. And I have a few other songs. Oh, other thing too is there's got to be like an old like Motown soul kind of song in this. And kind I, of in the way that uh, On the Line, starring Lance Bass and Joey Fatone and Emmanuel Shrieky, they had uh, Al Green in the movie. Yeah. And they sang Let's Stay Together at the end. Yeah, but not the new version of Let's... Not, no rapping in this version of, of Let's <laughs> Stay Together. <laughs> so you saw On the Line, and you never saw Bring It On. I saw that part of On the Line. All right. Uh, oh, I saw the whole movie. I, saw, I had to watch it for something. But... Uh-huh. Uh, Trying to think, because well, like I was telling you earlier, maybe like um, sing that song. How can you mend a broken heart by Al Green? Um, there's also some Otis Redding songs you could put on there. You could do, yeah, you could do Otis Redding. Maybe um, try a little tenderness. Try a little tenderness. That might be too on the nose, though. Like this, this would be the part of after they broke up in the movie, after the the two protagonists break up. Yeah. And yeah, but there's always in the third act. There's always a some type of falling out. Like you find something out about him. He lied about something. Yeah. And um, they broke. Just some reason they broke it or off. Maybe maybe her old boyfriend is in town, mm-hmm. and she crosses paths with him, and Mark Ruffalo catches them. Sees him like touching her hand yeah. and like trying to talk to her, and she's not into it. But you can't obviously hear anything. No, and he thinks that. Oh, she's like like they, into her let's old say boyfriend. let's say like like he kisses her for like four or five seconds and he sees that and then he leaves before she pulls away and, and slaps goes, him. Yeah, yeah, like that. <laughs> and yes, so they break up because he's like, "Oh, I saw you with your boyfriend," and then he's like, "I know you didn't see everything." Blah blah blah. So then and he they goes, break up. He goes, he goes, "I saw you with Mister Blue BMW." Yeah, he says that. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, saw you with uh, Mr. Trust Fund. That's okay. Go out, go, you guys go can live go, your life. Guys can go eat out of your silver spoons. Yeah. Like that. I want to drink my coffee. My bean water. And then in the in the montage of him, like, missing her, he, like, he tries to make a cup of coffee and he ruins it. Like, he's never ruined a cup of coffee before. Yeah, and then he's so frustrated he chucks the cup across the kitchen and he busts it. Yeah. And he like slides down the wall and he's crying. And he has those like big giant silver coffee machines like they have in those places, like those big ones and he like punches it. 
So he's rich too? Yeah, you need these kind of machines for to make the good coffee. I thought he was in his home. What? I thought you were saying he's no. in his home. Oh, he's, he's at trying work. To, he's at work trying to make coffee and it's not coming out good. And there's like a line in back when people go, I need my coffee. Just wait, just wait. You oh, I, I mean? thought he's home trying to make himself a cup of coffee. No, no, he's thinking about, uh, who do we say was the was the lady? Lainey Boggs. Rachel E. Cook. Yeah. Okay, he's thinking about Rachel E. Cook. And at on this montage, like she's ruining stuff. Like she, like maybe, like she's like um, staring into nothing. And there's a celebrity trying to talk to her, and then she goes like, "What? What? Oh yeah." Who's like a super, super like happening celebrity at the time? Like a supermodel, like maybe a. Well, how about like, um, let's say Carson Daly is talking to her. Carson Daly could be talking to her. Carson Daly played himself though. And with Rachel Lee Cook in um, Josie and the Pussycats. So, yeah, she, he would do it. No, no, no. We we don't want him again. Okay. Um. Or, or let's say it's Brian McFadden. Nobody remembers <laughs> Brian McFadden. Only, literally, only me and you remember Brian McFadden. Okay. Um, I met him one time. Yeah, I think you told me. Yeah, he was a total airhead. Uh, let's say it's, uh, let's say Joey Fatone. Let's say Joey Fatone's talking it to It could her. be Joey Fatone, and he'd be like, hey, Lainey. Yeah, I made her name Lainey because it was that, and she saw that. That's fine. Hey, Lainey, what was going on with you? Like he knows her, and he knows this is not her personality; it's like drifting personality. Yeah, and she's like, "Oh, sorry, you know." And also, like, um, Alfred Woodard calls her in for a meeting and said, "Listen, what's going on? Like, what's he's trying to get personal with her? What's going on?" And then he, like, she gives her gives her some type of good advice. And then she goes and talks to Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. But in this scene, there's got to be a song, a soul song. Not Motown. And it's not Try a Little Tenderness? It's in the Stax Records world. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe like Ray Charles, like a Ray Charles song. Or I don't know too much Ray Charles music. Um... Just let's put How Do You Mend a Broken Heart by Al Green. Can you stop the rain fall down? Tell me how can you stop? Oh, sun, I'm shining. What makes the world go? That'll be. While all that's going on, that song's playing in the background. Excuse me. Okay, and then they are reunited. Where are they reunited? Where's like a common ground to something they both had in common? The first place they met is too too on the nose. It's too corny. Um, let's say they... During their time together, they spent a lot of time at... I got it. I got it. Barnes & Noble. No, no, no. She is doing an art show for some type of celebrity. Some type of celebrity is doing an art show. He is doing the catering. The, catering, the coffee. Okay. At that place. So they come together at that. Yeah. And like they see each other and um, I feel like what, what song? song is playing. Yeah. Um... They see each other at the part. They're like, what do, what do you think they're going to do? Like, Vertical horizon, everything you want. He's everything you want. He's everything you need. He's everything inside of you that you wish you could be. He says all yeah. the I have here to um, BB Max back here. Until you're back here, baby. That's good. Or um I have here new radicals, you get what you give. Yeah, that could be ending credits. Uh let's just rattle off some other songs. Um what do you have any more that you didn't say anything? Um not really. I 
I wrote down a bunch of stuff, but... While I was driving earlier today, I totally forgot Coldplay would definitely be on here. Coldplay would be on that. Um, I also wrote down These Are The Days, or These Are Days by 10,000 Maniacs. Yeah. When they meet again at the, the art show, it is, uh, and they, they, they kiss and make up, it's Coldplay's In My Place. Oh no, too sad. Why is it in my place? That's not sad, is it? That's like, it's so drabby. I wanted it to be like... But that guitar line. Yeah, but the whole movie is like poppy. Like it's... Yeah. What did you want in there? Like yellow? Something more fun. Yeah, maybe yellow. Yellow's on there? Yeah. Okay. It's a little more... It's happier. In My Place is not a bad song. In My Place is just so somber, I feel like. No, but it's got that guitar, little guitar line. I know what you're talking about, but I feel like it's somber. Or how about, um... Oh, Shiver would be on here. Shiver is, uh, Coldplay? Coldplay Shiver. I thought you were talking about, um... That would be earlier in the movie. I thought you were talking about that Fuel song. That might be called Shimmer, though. Shimmer, no, not Shimmer. I'm talking about Shiver. You know the song. I feel like there might be a, a Fuel song on this playlist. No, well. there's no Fuel. I'm, I wouldn't allow it. <laughs> Uh, another song, uh, some more songs I have. I have Duncan Cheeks' Barely Breathing, which I think would not be on here. Might fit. Oh, I forgot. Uh, Craig David's Fill Me In. No. No? I don't know. Maybe, well, I don't know. Maybe during, a, like, an office All right, how about, montage. How about Goo Goo Dolls Slide? Um... Maybe that would be during the like that could also be falling in love and like having things in common. Maybe they're going like, on dates. Like they both, like they both um, realize and start talking about how much they love. Um, what's like a really obscure director? I don't know. Like they both really love um, c- certain types of movies from like a long time. Like it, there always has to be like a throwback thing. Maybe he's like. Uh, Maybe it's not obscure. Maybe it's like they both love Woody Allen. Uh, let's say he's like, he takes her out on like Chelsea Pier, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, this is my favorite place. And she's like, no kidding, I used to come here all the time with my dad before he died. Somebody has a dead parent. Yeah, yeah. There's always a dead parent. Um, another song I have, "You Two Sweetest Thing," but the '90s version, the one with uh, West Side, West Life, West Life, West Life, yes. Um, yeah, that might be in it. That was in a movie, wasn't it? I feel like it was. Anyway, um, another song I have on here. All of these feel like they were in movies. You Don't Know uh, Strange Condition by Pete Yorn, right? I think I played it for you and you said it was too slow. It's again, it's somber. That was in the Me, Myself, and Irene soundtrack. A lot of uh, Pete Yorn on that soundtrack. Me, myself, and Irene? Yes. Well, who did that movie? Was that, that was that a Fairly Brothers? That was a Fairly Brothers movie. Yeah. Um, Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles, which I think is just too played out now. And I had um, a similar one, which was Michelle Branch's All You Wanted. So lonely inside, so busy out. Because it kind of has those lyrics that really... Ooh, would the Santana song be on there? No, 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 no. No Santana at all. <laughs> no. That's... that's So a little bit of love? No, 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 no. No, please. Game of Love. Game of Love. Yeah, okay, now it's going to be stuck in my head that you said the title. Which I think was written by the New Radicals guy. Oh, really? I think so. Right, let me check. Who wrote know. that song? So you talk about songs that you... That you would have put on there. Um, I wrote down "Drive" by the Cars. Okay. I always feel like there's. I know it's old at this point, but um, I feel like there's always like a throwback or two. Yeah. In these movies. Hold on, I'm looking it up now. Who wrote "Game of Love"? The Game of Love. Uh, yeah, songwriter was Greg Alexander, who is the guy from, uh, New Radicals. Of course that guy had two first names, Greg Alexander. He had a weird life. Really? I watched, uh, yeah, I read about 
like his whole thing. Also written by Rick Knowles, and he co-wrote. His songs have appeared on over 200 albums. Oh, my goodness. Lana Del Rey, Adele, Stevie Nicks, Dua Lipa, Miguel, Madonna, Dido. Ooh, Dido would be good on this. Yeah, Dido might be on it. Let's see what else. She did a lot at that time. Let's see what Dido's discography is. Where is her discography? Hey. Oh, this is even... This isn't the right Dido. So, Wikipedia put Dido, but it's some type of Greek known as Alyssa or Elisa, was the legendary founder and first queen of the Phoenish, Ph Phoenician? That's not how you spell Phoenician. Mm -hmm. That's how you spell Phoenician? Mm -hmm. Yeah, anytime really? you see uh, P H O E N like that, it's That's thin. not how you spell it's Phoenician. Thin. Like think of Phoenix. I thought it was think like Finnish you, people. Think how you spell think how you spell Phoenix. Yeah, I know that, but I never seen it spelled before. I thought Phoenician was more like like Finnish. No, that would be Finnish. Like Finland. Yeah, that would be Finnish. Yeah, Finnishian. Fin no. <laughs> I'm not joking. I think this is probably where we wrap it up. Alright. <laughs> so I think we've pretty much covered the playlist. We did pretty good. I think we're going to actually make this playlist, and you could probably, by the time this It'll comes be out, on the notes. Spotify. Uh, yeah, I'll make a Spotify. I'll make a YouTube playlist, and um, yeah, all these will be on uh, Spotify, YouTube. What's the other ones? I can I can put it on for it. It doesn't matter. Probably Apple. App? No, I'm not, no. I don't know. I'll see. But uh, all the songs will be on a playlist, and uh, links will be in the episode description. So, guys. This was fun. I hope yeah. we get to do it again. I, I hope you guys I, had as much fun as we did. I forgot what we named the show. Playlisting with Mike and Susie? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, all right. We'll so, this has been, if it is, uh, Playlisting with Mike and Susie. Thank you, guys. And, Thanks. Uh, have a good day.